Half-Life 2 has a pretty big and diverse enemy variety. What if I was to tell you that there used to be a lot more though? Today, we're taking a look at all cut characters and enemies of Half-Life 2 that we know of. I will both explain all that is known about them and also theorize a bit as to how they would be implemented and why they were cut. This video will be split into two parts, the next one will release next week, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. Also for context, I hosted a cut character art competition on my Discord. In the top left corner, you'll always see who the shown image was made by or if it's official. Be sure to join the Discord as well, even if you aren't interested in art competitions and simply want to chat with others. The link is in the description. Also make sure to comment which of these cut characters is your favorite and why. Alright, let's get into it. The Combine Synth Elite Soldier looks to be about the size of a hunter of Episode 2. It is a part human, part synth enemy. It was to be very athletic, similar to the assassin seen in Half-Life 1, also just as stealthy. It would also have quite a bunch of HP. It would have a giant left and a small lanky right arm, the left one usually then holding a weapon. The only place it's ever mentioned is in the Raising the Bar, a book about the development of all Valve games up until 2004. There it was mentioned to be seen in the Air Exchange chapter, a cut chapter of Half-Life 2. This concept evolved a lot and eventually turned into the Combine Elite. It's suspected that the design of the arms was later reused for the Charger and Left 4 Dead 2. The Cremators are probably some of, if not the most well-known cut characters in all of gaming, and that for good reason. If you have somehow gone through your life as a Half-Life fan and not heard about her yet, they were planned to be seen moving around the dark and gritty streets of the Half-Life 2 beta, each carrying a flamethrower of sorts that is able to shoot a green beam of plasma, which would disintegrate organic matter. These janitors of sorts were crucial to maintaining the dystopian landscape that the Half-Life 2 beta world used to be. This is also why there are so many burned corpses in the canals of Half-Life 2, which means law-wise they are still somewhat implied to be around. Looking at them, they were supposed to be about 10 feet tall and have pokeball-shaped heads. These heads are also still in the retail game, actually. They are found in Eli's lab in Half-Life 2. Upon inspection, Eli will comment, Alex brings in the strangest things. The plasma weapons they carry were also supposed to be able to be picked up by the player at one point in the game. The correct name for the gun being Emulator. This isn't the only weapon we were planned to receive from the Cremator. You see, at one point a weapon called the Brick Bed was planned for Half-Life 2. This would allow you to pick up certain props and throw them around, the Cremator head being one of them. Of all the cut characters, the Cremators are the ones I am the most sad about, which is a sentiment a lot of people share. There might be a future for the Cremator though. Did you know that there were actually plans to bring her back in Half-Life Alex? Yep. While the details are unclear, check out this concept art for her. Imagine how great her reveal would have been if she was included in Half-Life Alex. Not a lot more than this concept art is known about the Stampeder. It would have, given its name, most likely gone around stampeding things. It's also not known what its origins or affiliations are. It's assumed to be a creature from Zen. I could see it being a comic creature as well though. It kinda reminds me of the dropship looks wise. It does definitely have a look not seen in any other character in Half-Life though. It also kinda looks like this guy. You might notice immediately that this looks a lot like Odessa, which is because it is based on the same reference image. The reference image actually being the martial arts instructor of one of the game's developers. Odell was to be seen at the start of the Borealis chapter. He would use a welding torch to unlock doors on the ship, which is a similar ability to the HECU engineers in Opposing Force. Going by some leaked sound files, Odell was to be a bit of a sarcastic and ironic guy. Hey, here's a thought. I've got a cigarette lighter, you've got a gun. Maybe you should go first. Odell's fate on the Borealis is not something that is known today. Given that the entire Borealis chapter was cut, it's apparent why this guy was as well. I do wonder if Odessa will perhaps appear in episode 3 if it is to ever release. Would be cool if he was to be seen at the Borealis, taking the role of Odell once more. It's also worth mentioning that the character of Odell is very similar to that of Russell in Half-Life Alex, both looks and behavior wise. Perhaps even furthermore worth mentioning, Russell underwent various transformations during development, initially intended to be Odessa from Half-Life 2 and later considered to take on the role of Laszlo. He ended up being neither of the two though, not that we know of. Conscripts were planned to be a human combine unit. They would be the remains of former Earth forces like militaries, forced to fight for the combine. The captain of theirs would have been Captain Vance, which is a character I'll get to in a second. The conscripts would have randomized heads and even sometimes wear helmets. They would also often cooperate with the resistance, given that they were unwillingly forced to be part of the combine. As they were cut rather late into development, there is a ton of content including them that we know about. To give you one example, that one sniper rooftop scene with Barney in Half-Life 2 was originally supposed to involve a lot of pinned down conscripts alongside a few other changes. It is most likely to be assumed that the conscripts kinda got replaced with Metro Cops, as they are the more human variant of common units we have today. There are two named conscripts we know of, Manwich and Peters. They seem to have been friends or at least somehow know one another, as Manwich would have yelled, hang on Peters, we're gonna get you out of there, in a scene alongside Captain Vance, where Peters was to be stuck in a destroyed APC. Gordon, Vance and Manwich would have been pinned down by a sniper. Vance would have told Manwich to stay in cover. To which Manwich would have responded with, and I quote, Pussy. 
Manwich would then say he's gonna go for it and run towards the sniper screaming, You want me? You want some of me? Only to then get killed by the sniper. Peter's fate is unknown, though it seems he would have been saved out of the APC. These guys were cut alongside the other conscripts and in my opinion kinda brought back with Gregs and Shackley in episode 2. Captain Vance, leader of the conscripts. He was to be one of the surviving military leaders of Earth. Even though he was recruited by the Combine to lead the conscripts, he would work undercover for the resistance and was supposed to be Alex's father. Captain Vance was also planned to have his own headquarters in an emergency bunker situated pretty close to the Citadel's outer wall. Not a lot more is known about him or his fate. In the final game, Odessa Kabich and Barney Calhoun kinda replace his role as a military leader. Eli Maxwell, even though he ended up becoming Eli Vance in the final game, was not supposed to be a relative of Alex Vance. He is very similar to the Eli Vance we know today, even having the same missing leg. He also had his own scrapyard and lab, in which he was working on Dog and the Physics Manipulator, basically the fist gun, which eventually ended up becoming the gravity gun we know today. He was to show Gordon a slideshow of what happened in the time between Half-Life 1 and Half-Life 2, something that still is kinda true with the newspaper scene on the wall in Eli's lab. During development, it was at one point decided to merge the characters of Eli Maxwell and Captain Vance to create Eli Vance. His character still looks like it could be Eli Maxwell, simply in different clothing and having a beard. In Half-Life Alex, Eli is seen wearing a beanie, which looks very similar to the one of Eli Maxwell. This enemy seems to be a creature similar to the Mortar and Trapsin, which are two APCs that somewhat made it into the final game the latter of which it was also seen alongside of in Raising the Bar. When seen in relation to the crab synth in this concept art, it is likely that the assault synth would be the same size as a head crab. I really like the vibe of these different types of synths. I wish they were still seen in the final game. I assume this character was cut alongside a ton of the different types of synths in an attempt to kinda shift the style to what we know the Combine as today. This seems to be one of the very first iterations of what the sniper was planned to look like. A really fun detail about it is that it doesn't have a head, which is very much favorable when in a sniper duel. They also remind me of the Boston Dynamics robots. These would have been really cool to see. Adding them also basically changes nothing but the ragdoll you'd see flying out of the windows once you throw a grenade in there, aside from being a cool detail. It's most likely that the sniper concept was further developed into the Combine Sniper Elite, which is a character we'll get to now. The Combat Sniper Elite is another fan favorite. We have the Combat Elites and Combat Snipers in the retail game. But this guy combines the best of the two worlds. The Combat Elite Sniper is a predecessor of the Combat Elite of the Beta, which is a character we'll get to in a bit. The original model looked like this, which was probably placeholder. It was to be well camoed and was even able to cloak. There are leftover animations of it using grenades. In the league, the only voice styles it had were reused HECU lines, probably placeholder. This guy ended up being made into what we know as the Combine Elite and the most static Combine Snipers. I could totally see this guy fitting in a chapter like Fall of Freeman or Rock Paper Shotgun though. The direct successor of the Combine Sniper Elite, it was to carry a lot more weapons, including the XM29 OICW, MP5K, Spares 12, the Sniper and the GR9. By the way, if you ever want to see a cut weapons video, let me know. The Elite is a transhuman unit. Its face can still be seen through its goggles. Overall it is very similar to the Combine Sniper Elite, even featuring the same cloaking. Its behavior was to be directly the same as the standard Overwatch soldier, according to the Source Code League. It eventually became the common Elite we know today. The workers are the direct successor of the cut construction workers of Half-Life 1. They would be seen in factory portraits of the game, which were cut. This also explains why we don't see them in the final game. Workers were to be seen operating the backhoe, a cut vehicle of Half-Life 2. I really need to see some kind of mod that takes place in the current Half-Life universe that utilizes these workers in a factory of some sorts. I can imagine that being pretty great. The Borealis workers were to be featured on the Borealis, in case the name didn't make that obvious. They were cut alongside the Borealis chapter. All the crew members would have been found dead upon Gordon and Nodell's arrival. They are also the successor of the workers. Which to put it in a clear sentence, the cut Borealis workers are the successor to the cut workers, which are the successor to the cut construction workers. Quite a bunch of cutting going on. The KA-27 is what eventually ended up becoming the Hunter Chopper. The KA-27 is a recycled Soviet helicopter reused by the Combine. It was also to be used by the conscripts at one point. Similar to the Hunter Chopper, they could only be destroyed using explosives. They appear in a ton of beta maps, similar to how Hunter Choppers appear quite often in Half-Life 2. Fun fact, this helicopter seen at the end of Episode 2 is based on the Mil Mi-8, which is a spiritual successor of the cam of KA-27, the model that the KA-27 is based on. I must say, I prefer the Hunter Chopper we know today a lot over this. Speaking of vehicles, the Merkava is a tank that ended up being cut alongside the conscripts. However, it did not mainly belong to them. It was a tank repurposed by the Combine. There are a few known scenes with it. One of them happening in the same level where the conscripts are pinned down by the sniper which ended up being the Barney level. As the APC ended up being the only armored vehicle seen in the game, this was probably cut due to not fitting the Combine's art style. 
The conscript APC has little info on it. It was seen a couple times in a few maps. There are both the VAB APC model and the V100. These were most likely cut alongside the conscripts. Though it is to note that this wasn't fully cut. The V100 is still found in the game. You might remember seeing it in Enter Citizen 1. I really wonder why we never saw the resistance using any kind of old military vehicle. Surely the combine didn't destroy every piece of military equipment. The alien combine soldier is the predecessor of the Overwatch soldier. There is actually an exact quote as to why this was cut. According to Rating the Bar, the concept was abandoned to avoid any direct representation of human scale alien enemies and instead depict the combine as a more elusive force. It was to move around like a snake. It is also inspired by the Kingpin, a cut enemy of Half Life 1. The design of it probably ended up being recycled in the Advisor, with that similar sluggish look wearing some kind of armor. Another version was to have a more yellow theme and use an energy whip at close range, wearing thick plastic gear with an insignia on the back. The HK-707 is a static weapon, the model of which can be found in the beta model files. At one point in Half-Life 2, Gordon was to maneuver missiles around certain areas, in which the HK-707 would have been defenses the player would need to avoid or destroy. Given that it has a Gibbs version, it's unknown whether these would have been operated by an NPC or if they would have been automatic. They do have handles on the back though. They are most likely meant to be a fictional Heckler and Koch weapon, given their name starting with HK. Also, this NPC still exists in Hammer for Half-Life 2, Hammer being the level editor for Source games. The NPC has the entity name of NPC Missile Defense. It simply generates an error when trying to use it though. This entry basically just refers to all kinds of early combine models. Some images for them go so incredibly hard though that I just had to show them. To get more specific on the term Combine Guard, which refers to this specific image, this was apparently the first humanoid combine unit to have ever been suggested and was probably an early higher ranked civil protection unit. The trench coat it's wearing was inspired by the German uniforms of World War II. The weapon it's seen carrying was a shotgun, which eventually got changed to the XM29 OICW before turning into the SMG we know today. The bloody headcrab and bloody zombies are barely entries, I gotta be honest. It's simply what the headcrab and zombie used to look like. There were a few minor differences, like the bloody headcrab having blood spreaders on its front side, having a smaller mouth and a few more claws. The bloody zombie has no actual head, but rather only the bottom half of a jaw under the headcrab. Something later seen in the zombines. These weren't really cut, they were retextured. Similar to there being an elite variant of the combine soldier in the final game, there was to be an elite variant of the civil protection unit. It would have a different helmet, yellow eyes, a different skin including a red patch on the chest and a few more minor changes. I personally would have loved if more combine variants were included. Even if there is a fair argument for it to be too much clutter, I really would have loved it. Reminds me of the different types of clothes there are in Star Wars. If you want to see a mod that actually follows this concept, check out Swelter. The attack synth was to have 9 possibly sensory organs on its front surface and 6 weapon barrels on each side. It was to be as big as a strider, which is pretty scary, especially given how heavily armored it is as well. The legs themselves actually looking similar to those of the strider, even if much thicker. This enemy was probably cut alongside all the other types of synths. Another synth enemy, probably cut for the same reason the alien combine soldier was cut. It stems from the combine synth elite soldier and is a predecessor of the combine elite. It was to be similar in size and proportions to a human soldier. This character can still be found in the files. When viewing the combine elite in the source SDK model viewer, this guy will be the preview image. It was to be seen in the citadel. This enemy is definitely one of my favorites. Pretty sad it got cut. This enemy was planned for Half-Life 2 and ended up most likely being the inspiration for the endline grubs. Going by its name, it was probably to curl up into a ball and then unfurl an attack. It most likely also would have been a little more resilient than the end line grub. These were most likely cut at the same time the end line caves were cut during the beta stages. Could have been a fun addition, episode 2 though, where the end line caves were brought back. We often get to hear rats in Half-Life 2, implying that they are still around. At one point, rats were planned to actually be seen though. There is one cut model from Half-Life 2 alongside this texture. These probably ended up being cut due to the fact that the sounds of rats were already fulfilling the purpose of world building. A model would have been redundant, even if I personally would have loved to see them. They eventually ended up reappearing in Half-Life Alex. The Combot is the direct predecessor of the City Scanner. This is the first mechanical scanner to have been scripted during Half-Life 2's development. Functionally, it is the exact same as the City Scanner. Originally, Dork was to have a Combot head. This was switched out for the City Scanner. So yeah, nothing much of note. It basically just got a reskin in the retail game. The Hound Eye and Bolt Squid were originally planned to be seen in Half-Life 2 as well. The Bolt Squid was mostly to be seen in aquatic areas like the canals. It was also planned for it to get two new variants. A red one and one that swims that kinda looks like a crocodile. The Hound Eye was to be a lot more skinny in Half-Life 2. Probably showing that they struggled to find food on Earth. Which wasn't a problem they faced in Half-Life 1, where they just arrived from the homeworld. 
I'm very unsure why these were cut. I mean, the game did do alright without them, but at least like one reference could have been cool. A lot of mods do bring them back though. There is a lot of concept art showing more types of synths that were cut, of which we basically know nothing about. To be fair, a lot of these are probably just early concept arts of the Comrade Synth Elite Soldier. I got the name from this Half-Life 2 cut character wiki, which seems to be heavily griefed. The concept art is definitely real though. The Shield Synth is most likely an early concept art for what ended up becoming the Combine Elite Synth. The Slasher Synth was to be wielding a large sword or gun that was built into its left arm. It would have most likely moved around the player quickly while slashing them. The Juggernaut Synth kinda just looks like all humanoid synths we've seen squished into one single enemy. All of these were most likely cut once they decided on the style of Combine we know today. It's unknown why these were cut. Basically, they are simply the ceiling turret but attached to a wall. They were to appear in Combine buildings and structures. There really isn't a lot to say about them. These were the first 30 cut characters. Be sure to tune in next week for the other half. Let me know in the comments which of these cut characters is your favorite and why. Don't forget to join the Discord as well and consider becoming a channel member. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Alex brings in the strangest things.